everybody. Happy Sunday. It is a beautiful, beautiful day outside. This is just a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm so glad to see all of you here. Um, I'm just going to own it and be human. I forgot my mouse at Cisna. <laughs> so when I click through, I apologize. I'm going to have to be doing one of these while I'm talking. So my apologies. I was just looking through my bag and it's still sitting at the pulpit at Cisna. So we're just going to go with it. <laughs> I appreciate your grace and understanding. So um, to begin today, we have a couple of announcements. We're going to have our to-go style ice cream social today to celebrate the students going back to school. And some of them may be ready, some of them may not, but that's okay, we're still gonna celebrate. We have a couple of tables set up outside of the fellowship hall in the back. So we're gonna have supplies set up so we can have ice cream cones made on Sundays. And it's gonna be to-go style, for safety reasons. We do know numbers are going back up, so we wanna make sure everyone stays safe, especially as the school year is beginning again. Um, also, the Wednesday meal for this week is canceled. Okay, so there is not going to be a Wednesday meal, just so you are aware. Does anyone have any other announcements that I may have missed? Nope, okay. So we will go ahead and begin with our call to worship. I invite you to join me when the words are bolded. Come, let us put away all things that divide us, and love one another, for we are members of one another. Come, let us not be divided from one another by gender, race, color, or status, for we are members of one another. Come, let us put away lies, anger, stealing, and corrupt words, for we are members of one another. Come, let us put away bitterness, wrath, clamor, and malice, for we are members of one another. Together, let us speak truth, labor together, and do what is good and edifying to the Lord. Oh, I skipped ahead, I'm sorry. We'll just continue with let us be imitators. Let us be imitators of God, Walk as the children of God, and love as Christ first loved us. Come, let us be the people of God we are called to be. For we are saints, God's chosen people, and members of one another. Amen. The first hymn we will be singing today is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. It is number 474 in your hymnal, and it will also be on the screen. Um, at this time, please stand as you are able. Thank you. 
try something a little different just so I don't have to keep turning my back. Um, we're going to start with our opening prayer, and it is up on the screen if you would like to join me. It is not printed um, because it's a little bit longer. So together, O Eternal One, whose message to us has always been that our relationship to you is inextricably related to how we treat our sisters and brothers, bend low your spirit this day and touch us with your power. Wean us from our tendency to nurture perceived slights and to put hot coals to our anger. Wean us from all tendencies to take advantage of others for personal gain. Wean us from negativity and from becoming bitter, whether or not we think we are justified in our feelings. Wean us from the all too human and common tendency to gossip about others and to slander them in any way. Wean us from carrying malice in our hearts and from giving in to anything that would poison relationships with others. Make us over again, O oh gracious God. Give us a consistent kindness and compassion for others. Keep us always tender-hearted, even when the world delivers difficult blows and setbacks to us. Teach us once again about your redeeming grace in order that we may learn however slowly and however tentatively, how to forgive others. Teach us how to live abundantly into the future as victorious and expectant people, greeting each new day with eagerness and excitement. And indelibly remind us that we are among your forgiven and beloved community. We present to you all who have special need of your grace today. Keep them in your gracious care, and insofar as we are able, use us to make their burdens lighter. Be with those who war and who are victims of war, and grant to us a peaceful world. Amen. At this time, we will move into a time of sharing any joys and concerns. So I would like to ask, does anyone have anything that they would like to share this morning? Judy? Yes, that was one I was going to lift up as well. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't be sorry. <laughs> that, I mean, that area was hit so hard. So, yes, let's keep Christine and Jim and the residents of Gibson City in our prayers as they deal with this. So prayers for relief efforts, and thank you for doing what you're doing to help them. <laughs> That's okay. It helps. <laughs> Anyone else? I have a friend who, Brenda Kingston. She's a member of the church way back. Well, it be, it's a joy that you're here today. Thank you. And it was nice to meet you as well. Anyone else, Judy? So this procedure went well. Good. That's a joy. Anyone else? I would also like to lift up um, the people who live in Haiti. There was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake 
not that long ago that caused a lot of damage down there. Last I read, there were at least 200 victims already who perished um, because of that. So I would just like to lift up people in Haiti, relief efforts going on down there to help them as well. Um, and there is a family in Watsika, the Wheelert family, um, who recently lost their son, Billy, um, very unexpectedly and tragically. So if we could please lift up the Wheelert family as they are dealing with this loss as well. If there are no other joys or concerns, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you that we are able to gather today to be able to worship you. Lord, I thank you for all of these people here today, each of them bringing their unique gifts and callings into your kingdom. And Lord, we have shared a few joys and a few concerns this morning that we would like to lay at your feet. For the people in Gibson City who are dealing with the massive amount of rainfall that they had, Lord, please help equip those people who are sending relief to them. Please help um, the people be able to find what they need so they can clean up and take care of what they need to take care of. And Lord, um, we just ask that you be with them as they deal with this, that you know this is something they've never dealt with before. Lord, we would also like to lift up those who were victims of the earthquake down in Haiti for those lives that were lost, for those lives that are searching for their loved ones, for relief efforts taking place there. We, Lord, we ask that you be with them during this really, really difficult time. Lord, for the Wheelert family over in Watsika, we ask that you bring them peace and comfort during this difficult loss they had of Billy. Lord, we do have joys today, and we thank you for that. The joy of having friends visit, the joy of being together, the joy of positive medical and healthcare procedures. Lord, thank you for being with those people. Thank you for bringing them here today. Thank you for the medical teams that assisted in these different um, medical needs. We are very grateful for that. And Lord, as we move into saying the Lord's Prayer, we also want to bring to you any unspoken prayer requests, any unspoken challenges, any unspoken joys that are taking place. We are confident, we know that you know what these challenges need and what these joys are, and we are grateful for that. We thank you for being all-knowing and ever-present and ever-comforting. I ask that um, you keep these in mind as we begin to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will move into our um, time of offering. Um, we are still keeping the plate in the rear of the church for safety reasons, but I encourage you to use this time to offer up your prayers to God. Offer up your petitions you have for him. Offer up your joys that you have for him, too as we spend a minute or two reflecting on the wonderful provisions he has given us. <laughs>
patient and merciful God, we hear your call to live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Our ears hear these words in our worship. Our minds know what they mean. Our hearts long to follow them, but we know that tomorrow we will be tempted to slip into the familiar life where we ourselves are at the center of our world and the needs we focus on are almost entirely our own. In our giving this day, help us strengthen our resolve to love as Christ loves us. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to remain standing as we will sing our next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. It's number 399 in your hymnal, and it will also be on the screen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 through the beginning of chapter 5 verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So good morning and welcome again to worship. I'm glad that we are all here together on this beautiful day today. We are continuing our journey through this letter of Ephesians through the summer. But I am a little sad because today is August 15th and it is officially the halfway point through the month of August. So in my mind, that pretty much means summer's done, which is kind of sad. And that means it's time to get ready to go back to school. At this point, um, if they're not back in school already, teachers are gearing up to get their classrooms ready, preparing those first lessons, and sitting through those mandatory back to school institute meetings. Has anyone ever wondered what those institute meetings were about if you weren't a teacher? <laughs> school supply sales are everywhere, as I'm sure you've seen. And the kids are preparing, too, to go back to school, whether they want to or not. When heading back to school, one of the top priorities for a teacher in his or her classroom is not to make sure the lessons are perfect or that all the copies are made. But one of the top priorities of a teacher throughout the whole school year, but especially in those beginning weeks, is to create a positive, nurturing, and safe environment for all those students who walk through their door. This is not always easy, and it takes time and effort and intentionality. And this is so important for a learning classroom where students are engaged and feel loved and cared for. Now, no one is perfect, and sometimes creating this environment goes easier than other times. But the point of it is that this environment needs to be a safe space where all students feel loved and welcomed. These kids are all unique and beautiful and bring their own gifts and talents and personality to contribute to the makeup of this classroom. And it helps shape the experience that everyone in that room has together during those 180 days they spend together during the year. I think that this idea of creating a safe and loving space where all are welcomed and cared for applies to churches as well. And this will have an impact in all of God's kingdom. This is what the writer of Ephesians is getting at in the scripture that we looked at today. In these seven lines of text, the author gives us some practical suggestions for creating this environment to bring unity to the body of Christ, as I spoke about last Sunday. I also mentioned last week that the church is divided and our country is divided at this time. More and more people are turning away from attending church for so many different reasons. But the author of Ephesians knew, even back then, that unity is essential. At the beginning of chapter 5 today, the author calls us to be imitators of God, to act like God and love like Christ. That is a tall order. And let me start this by saying that coming into unity will not be perfect. Perfection is not possible for us. But the good news was that Jesus was perfect. As Christians, we're on this road to become like Christ as much as we possibly can with Jesus' help and with the help of the faith community. And he is definitely a perfect role model. This whole text today is about what it means to be in the community of faith, not how to be better individuals. We do need to try and develop our own personal relationship with God and grow in our own faith journey. But we don't want to play God individually. The original text from the Bible, when the writer said, be imitators of God, when it was translated from the original Greek, it was actually plural. So really, the writer is saying, all y'all be imitators of God. Okay? So if we think about that, and if we try to strive to be an imitator of God through community with each other, we have support. We have a system of checks and balances to help lift one another up as a whole. And then imitating God is a model for how we act toward others. 
The first suggestion the author gives is to always speak truth with love to one another, even if it seems hard. If we want to create that safe, loving environment, it's going to take work. We have unique personalities with unique callings, so sometimes conflict will happen. But we need to remember to speak the truth in love. Lying is dangerous. It causes more conflict, leads to sin, even if telling a little lie may seem easier in the moment. The thing is, people lose track of lies, but it's always easier to remember the truth. Jesus always spoke the truth, no matter how difficult it was. In fact, in the Gospel of John, he declared that he was the truth. So we need to remember this, um, so as to remove our own ego, our own biases, and build up others instead of tearing down with lies or speaking with malice in our hearts. We won't be able to bring the world to Christ through lies and deceit. It's going to be through truth. The truth of our own lives and how we live, and the truth of the gospel that we try to live. Part of living out that truth through our own lives is admitting our shortcomings and owning up when we are wrong and continually working toward imitating God through community. That's the goal. Truth-telling is at the core of these guidelines the author gives because if we're dishonest with others and with ourselves, we will never be able to imitate God and build that safe space so we can welcome everyone into this community. The next verse says, Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. and Do not make room for the devil. Anger is a human emotion. We all get angry. It's part of who we are as humans. However, what is not okay is letting the anger become all-consuming. When it consumes us, it will lead to sin and cause a lot of destruction. And I'm sure we've all been there at some point. We've all gotten angry. When someone acts in the heat of the moment, regret is soon to follow behind. And there's so much truth to this. Psalm 37, 8 states, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Proverbs 14, 29 echoes this. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. And I think Ecclesiastes 10.4 holds a lot of wisdom. As the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place, for calmness will lay great offenses to rest. These are only a few examples from the Bible, but rest assured, there is a lot more in there. This is something we all need to be aware of. It causes destruction and leads to sin, which leads to the next piece of advice the writer has for us while working together to better God's kingdom. The writer says, don't let sin take over, because that makes room for the enemy to creep into our lives. When we are consumed with that anger, we will sin. When we sin, the enemy gains a stronghold in our hearts and in our minds. And this stronghold will become greater the more we let it. This is why we need to stay connected to God. This is why we should be a part of a faith community. This is why we need to help and support others as they take part in their journeys as well. We are in this together, and we can stay connected to each other through Bible studies, small groups, service projects, prayer chain, volunteering, and just praying for one another. Another way to not let the enemy take hold is to do honest work with our hands so it can be shared with those who need it. The verse says, Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Proverbs 16.27 echoes this as well. It says, Idle hands are the devil's workshop. When we use our hands and hearts to serve, when we do it together, we will help create that loving environment within the church and out there in the kingdom of God. 
And we have the chance to live like Jesus did, helping fulfill those callings that he has for us. In addition to keeping our hands busy and serving, we must watch our tongues and what they say. I mentioned earlier how we should always speak truth and avoid deceit. The words that come from our mouths should be God-honoring. We should use words to build up instead of tear down and give grace to others because we so desperately need that grace as well. And thank goodness for the unmerited grace that God bestows upon us every day. I need grace all the time. I mess up all the time. But God still loves me and gives me this grace every day. And it's a privilege that I have the opportunity to give grace to others as well. Our world would look so different if everyone gave a little bit of grace and used positive, affirming words to build more and tear down less. And thank goodness we have Jesus as our example. He always spoke out of love. There were times he had to correct, redirect, rebuke, but he never did it out of vanity or just for kicks. It was out of love and to teach, and it had a purpose. Just as parents should use words to build up their children, teachers should use words to build up their students, there are times where the words have to correct and redirect, but it should come out of a place of love. It should always build up and tear down, and this instead of tear down, and this will help strengthen God's kingdom. As Christ followers, we have the Holy Spirit on our side. We were marked with the Spirit's presence when we accepted Christ into our lives, and therefore are called to live a life imitating God. We become separated from the Spirit when we participate in wrongful conduct and sin. But the good news is that because Jesus died for us, he was able to send us the Spirit to help guide us every single day. We have a chance to repent, to ask for forgiveness, and start over and reconnect. The author concludes the passage by stating, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So put away the negative and embrace the positive. This is hard work, but it's work that needs to be done. It requires a change of mindset and being intentional, and it will help all of us grow in maturity like the author mentioned last week. If we do this, if we take the time to make these moves and be intentional about how we live our lives, we have a better chance of imitating God and living as his children. We will be living in love as Christ loved us. Being imitators of God through community is a high calling. And this is why we spend the majority of our lives getting to know God and serving him in such a way. So, if you feel like I've dumped a lot on you today, it's because I have. Something I've learned, though, through my own faith journey is that being a follower of Christ will not always be easy. It's a lifelong process. Jesus even told us this. He was completely truthful. It's not always easy, but it's always worth it. And participating in this community of faith to build up God's kingdom, worshiping together, serving together, loving one another together, living like Jesus did, is also always worth it. So I'd like to leave you with a few closing thoughts. What one step can we each take this week to be an imitator of God? How can we build the community and kingdom up for God's glory? How can we move forward as a community of faith, supporting one another and building each other up? At this time, I'd like to take a, just a brief moment to reflect silently, and I'd like you to 
pray to God, ask God for support, or offer him your thoughts that you are having. Let's pray. Merciful Creator, thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Help us to build up your kingdom through the community of faith. Help us work together and support one another to give glory to you. And help make way for others who may not know you yet, so they can experience the joy worshiping you can bring. I ask that you be with each and every person here today. Help us always turn to you first, and then turn to serve others in your name. Help us all to create that positive, loving, and safe community to build your kingdom as you intended. It's in Jesus' glorious name I pray. Amen. Um, our last hymn today is Abide With Me which is number 700 in the hymnal. Um, so at this time, I ask you to please stand as you are able and join me in Abide With Me. come up and just sit in the front. There's two here. We're only missing two. They went to go get the ice cream ready. <laughs> no, they're at their aunt's. Oh, okay. okay. They're coming home today. So gotcha. Yeah. You guys can just have a seat in the front. I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise. <laughs> I promise. Maybe it's because I'm, I was a former teacher. Um, 
you know, back to school time, I just want to give you guys a blessing as we get started, okay? And this is for the students, but this is also for the teachers, the administrators, if you know anyone who is heading back to school. Um, it's always, you know, a, a anxious and fun and expectant time to get ready to get back to work. So if you know anybody, you know, keep that in your mind and hearts as we get them ready today. So today we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by the children and youth gathered here. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that's been returned, books to be studied, tools to complete homework, notebooks, pencils, pens, protractors, compasses, crayons, rulers, scissors, glue sticks, and other items used for schoolwork, and they will find their way in and out of these backpacks. Someday so much stuff will fill these backpacks, and the student may find it difficult to walk. Other days they will be light and nearly empty, but on each and every day, these backpacks represent work required of the students gathered here. And as in every aspect of our life, we bring these before God for blessing at this time. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings and they commit themselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on their backpacks that they will carry. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. We pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. So you may have noticed up here, and this is for you guys as well, I put out some little goodies um, if you would like to keep with you. As you start school, you get going, there's a keychain, there's those little rubber bracelets that have inspirational messages on them. So once service is over, you are welcome to come and pick some stuff out. And also for everyone, I know you have said that there are a couple missing today. If you have any students in your life, if you have any teachers or administrators in your life that you would like to pass these goodies on to them, please feel free to do so. We want everyone to have a great and wonderful school year as it gets going again. Um, so just please, once service is over, you are welcome to do that if you would like. But at this time, to conclude our service today, I want to send you with this blessing. Go out and imitate God living in love. Put your hope in God's word and let your own words be truthful and constructive. May sin rouse your anger, but never let anger cause you to sin. Don't allow any room for evil, and may God always hear your voice. May Christ Jesus raise you to new life, and may the Holy Spirit nourish you for the life of love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you all for coming today. Go in peace. Kids, you have first dibs on that ice cream. <laughs> it is out behind the fellowship hall. And again, it's, it's a to-go format, but there's some good stuff out there. So go in peace and have a wonderful week.